solids. Hello, campers. We're back on our own today. We have no, so no guests. Reminds, it always reminds me of the, um, I thought for so long, it always reminds me of the Cliff Richard uh, film. Showing your age now. Well, I'm not bloody old. <laughs> um, so is a strange time of year when you have kids, even when you don't have kids, aren't they? Because everything just changes. You know, the, the drive to work become easier, but everything else becomes hard because during the day, yeah, no. everything gets busier because people are out about uh, later in the day. Yeah, I, yeah, I think, yeah, I don't know. It is just, it is strange times day. It's this century period where it's really easy to get to work, a little bit like COVID times when I was coming to the office. Not that easy, but that was, that was really easy when I first started coming during that. Um, because there was literally nobody on the roads. Do people moan here about six weeks summer holidays? I can remember in Ireland, and I know it was secondary school, I can't remember what the primary school were. I think we finished up around the end of May. Yeah, didn't you have a 12 months I think it was about 12 to 14 weeks off. That's a long time off. Though. It was superb, and I can only imagine really? like, the parents of the... the I, I used to get bored after six yeah. weeks, see. I, I, kind of, I needed that stimulation, I think. Football, sport, fishing, woods, you know, things that last. so much cricket you could play, though. Still haven't played it. Still haven't been to a game. 20 years in this country next year, and I've never been, been to a game. cricket game yet. And you've got friends who actually are in that arena. Don't, don't Mike Hogan and Dean Cosker and all these boys will be listening. Um, yeah, never been to a game yet. I need to give you a ticket. 2020 is okay to watch. Like the the, uh, the test stuff's a little bit kind of hard. I I do enjoy cricket. Do you know, we're talking, 100, that's the new one, we're talking about all this thing of going to events, doing things <laughs> with family, granted children. Leads perfectly into um, pensions. And retirement that we uh, we can chat about today. Well, exciting topic. <laughs> I once got told by one of my neighbours I was a pension bore. <laughs> yeah, get that. <laughs> it's not an exciting topic, but it's a very important one as well. And you know, we we got some stuff coming up on that in short as well. Haven't we? but... And uh, it's I get the mentality of people at the moment because. There is so much crap in the world. We've had Brexit, we've had COVID, we've had the Ukraine. Now we're potentially, you know, with what's going on in America and that we're potentially looking at recessions. There's so much negativity. That but I don't think we ever recovered from the Brexit thing. I was on this conversation with Matt Jones yesterday. I don't think we ever really recovered from the Brexit thing. Probably not. The impact of that and the shock of it and actually the whole run up to that and then obviously COVID hitting and so on and so forth and now, we're heading for, well, we, we, I don't think there's any quotes, but we are heading for a recession. I mean, we've, got to, we've got to be mindful of that. The, I, I was talking to somebody this morning in the gym and they said, stats coming out of America, there's one in five cars being repossessed in America at the moment, um, which is alarming. Is that people giving them back or actually people just going, uh, is that people saying, I can't pay for my car anymore? But possibly, yeah, that could well be it as well. But it, no matter which way it is, giving back or being repossessed is a huge number, um, which will eventually, you know, funnel over here. You know, the knock-on effects will yeah. will kick in at some stage. It is. It is just a. It's a scary time. But, like we've seen, in the history of the world, it's it's like a wave. You know, it come. It's it's up. It's up and down. Hmm. And we. It's, it's very it's very easy for us to s sit here and say everything will be okay. But when we talk about pensions or retirement, and it can be any sort of thing, you know, buy to let's, I suppose, it's just talking about the future person, which could be in one, two, three, four decades' time. And that will be okay. There'll be one or two peaks and troughs even between now and then. And it's really hard, I suppose, for people to get their mind around all the crap that's going on in the world now, we have to almost park it sometimes to think of how we can make the best of the future you. Yeah. Which is, I, I get it, it's hard, but it's a behavioural thing, I think. You know, it is, because I, I, like we talk about pensions, you know, like we, we're going to be doing a webinar very soon about what to do if you've got lots of old pensions and need tidying up. But people just, that, that comes through the door, that letter which has gone, oh yeah, I've got this old pension with the Viva, Aegon, now pensions, whatever it may be. And it goes in that wonderful drawer in the house 
we forget about it. We, I need to do something about that. But you just, tell, I think somebody just need to take action. Yeah, I just need to sort it. Don't wait till it's too late because we're all really good at that, aren't we? Leave it for the last minute. Oh, I'll sort that later date. Well, actually, that piece of paper is really important. If that piece of paper, which had, for example, £18,000 on, that's what's in your pension. If what came through the door was a bundle of £5 notes, so £18,000, yeah. you would do something yeah. with it, wouldn't you? Yeah. But because it's a piece of paper, which doesn't actually look like it's tangible, yeah. you don't do anything with it. But like I say, but if that bundle of cash dropped on your doorstep, you ain't just going to throw it in the drawer, are you? Pension money... Or pension value to people doesn't seem to be real numbers because it's pension. Maybe the fact that it's a mentality we brought up, I can't have it until a certain age. Yeah. But as you say, it's your money. Eighteen thousand pounds of a pension, eighteen thousand pounds of cash. There is absolutely no difference whatsoever. But no one sees it like that. No one sees this one you can't get till you're fifty-five going upwards. This one you can do now. Most people should get that one and put it into, into the pension. And I don't know, I think it's, a, it's just a, a <coughs> learned behaviour that they don't see pension money Important. or value as the same because they, they're not, be, that's mo my money that I get in the future. And that's what you're trying to explain to people. Yes, just start it, squirrelling away. That's the key to it. It's your money you're going to get in the future. So do something about it now to make sure it works for you in the future the best. So some social media, specifically um, Twitter, when you're seeing it, there's some good guys on there and they do um, nice posts every now and again. And you see a lot, you know, we, we're, we're pushed on the way news tells us how the world's going. And we see, especially maybe a previous generation, the end of a 10 o'clock news or whatever, and, and the FTSE close today up 3.9% or down. And everyone has the negative view on um, things going um, down and they don't see it as going up. The, some guys on social media, they're very good at it. And uh, instead of saying there's been 3 million wiped off the markets today, some days they go, there's been 4.7 billion added to the markets. And they make, they make a positive, on, but nobody talks. <laughs> yeah. And then when the markets go down, they put a little for sale sign on and this, they're actively saying, right, you're paying £200 a month into a savings pot for the longer term you. Yeah. There is a sale on. We know this will uh, bounce back. You're not touching this for many years. The sale is on, so you can buy these units of pensions cheaper, pay more money in. Mm. Because we all, um, in the past, used to queue up on Christmas Day night, leading into Boxing Day, Stephen's Day as it's called in Ireland. For the next sale. Uh, for the next day sales. And all you're buying is something at a reduced price. The, the markets are down. And usually something you didn't need as well. Absolutely. Or a white shirt. Like, you get, like the amount of people I know who could the next sale, they're buying stuff actually, I, I'm just buying it because it's in the sale. Did you actually need it though? It was on sale. It was cheaper than it was before. You so weren't going to buy before. You weren't going to buy before. No. And, and this is maybe the, 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 the concept that people need to do now is I'm saving into a, or I'm investing into a pension or an ISA or whatever it may be, X amount per month. Mm. Instead of looking at the value of the pot going down at the moment as a negative, forget about that because that will rebound because mm. it has to. And the amount that's been paid in per month increase that amount per month because the thing, the units that were one pound yeah. uh, each last month are now 90p. So there's a 10% reduction in what you can buy and they will rise as well along with your bigger pot so that you'll have more money for yes. the future you. It, it's just a concept of stop worrying about the here and now and the value going down because it's a paper-based value contribute more in if it's affordable yeah and it will be affordable because you have to plan for the future you and forget about it forget about the the short term volatility of the next one to two months or four months concentrate on the next one to five years mm -hmm. and you will see a rise and, and that doesn't have to be a pension you know you can use the same thing for any retirement maybe planning of an ISA, a bond. Look, you can even look at buying buy to lets in the future if people are yeah, if that's going your down in value. Yeah, I, I, with the changes in the uh, rules for investing uh, in property, um, 
don't know whether there'd be many people doing that. I think a lot of people are trying to jump out of it at the moment. The, the, the strange thing, and, and what I, people should be looking to do now, and um, if they message us, we can, we can give some out, is look at what spending you're doing now. And, and fine, take out, let's say, a mortgage or whatever. But other spending, what will you reduce when you finish work? Not retire, because, you, you know, retirement is, a, is maybe a silly word. When you finish work, what spending are you going to give up on? And most people will say, mm, I can't give up that, 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 that. In fact, some things will actually increase the well, socialising of that. There's a huge misconception that when you retire, your income is going to reduce. The, your actual spend is reduced. It's not. If anything, it might go up slightly. Yes, you may not have the mortgage. We'd kind of hope you finish the mortgage before you retire anyway. So then you have a bit of an idea of what your expenditure. But that's going to stay the same for quite a long time. Yeah. Because you're not going to eat less. Yeah, you might drive the car a little bit less because you're not commuting to work. But so many people work from home now anyway. Well, the, ca the car will be out socialising. Two cars might go down to one. Yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Socialising and going out visiting people yeah. will continue. Or going on holiday, going places. So actually, your gas, electric, water, council tax, they're not going to reduce. Your sky bill's not going to reduce. If anything, you might go up a bit because you're going to be watching maybe some more sky sports. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the, the, but there, there's that misconception, actually. Like People say, oh, well, actually, when I retire, I'll get a li I'll get a live on a thousand pound a month. And, but you spend three now. So we have seen for many, many years, the first year of people stopping working, they scrimp and save and they're afraid to spend. And they so reduce much. their expenditure down to next to nothing because they're, they're, they're petrified. And it's happened on dozens and dozens and dozens of people that we know. And on, when you come in and we sit down and you chat to them, then they realise, do you know what? I haven't had a great year because I, I saved, but I held back on stuff. Mm -hmm. Between that time of finishing work, be it 55, 60, 60, whatever age it is, to probably about 80, 85, spend money while you have your health because you can get on a plane, mm. you're not in a wheelchair, I know that's the next step. Plus, your travel insurance is not expensive. Oh, yeah. And spend more when you're active in your early years of not working. And when you get to that 80, 85, you are going to drop off. You know, it's that, like, or, or like my parents are in their 70s now, but they've had a problem now getting insurance to be able to go to Canada. So they haven't been able to go to Canada because the insurance. The insurance, I think, was probably as much as the holiday was going to cost. Well, that's just ridiculous. So actually, you've got to be mindful, actually, that there's going to get a point in age where you can't go and do these things unless you want to pay an excessive amount of insurance for you to actually travel. And that's probably down to forecasting, you know, stuff we do of plan out how much you're spending now, plan out what you're going to give up, Realize you're not going to give up any spending. In fact, you yeah. might actually increase it and see how much money you need for 15, 20 years of early retirement. Reduce that by maybe 20% in your 80s and work backwards yeah. um, as to a number that you need to achieve and then see roughly what you can contribute in per month. It's, it's not rocket science and it's not an exact science, mm. but it gives you a concept of saving £127 a month into something is not going to give you a lifestyle that you want yes. in the future. Mm. You, It's short-term pain of contributing now mm. with the magic effect of compound interest over the long term for the long-term gain of enjoying a, um, a, a financially free lifestyle yeah. in later years in life. Yeah, and I think, like, but, but it's like many things like that, like actually saving some of these things would be the first thing to go, but people won't think about stopping buying the clothes they don't really need. What, you know, having the memberships to Netflix and all these things they don't really need um, in exchange for saving or insuring themselves. The good... Other than the usual suspects, the greatest, um, um, what's the, the line that they say they are the greatest scam in the world when they talk about that? Amazon Prime. Oh. They've put themselves up by 20% oh, come wow. September. Yeah. I know Martin Lewis said, oh, tie in now. But you're paying a membership to an organisation, which people won't give up, for the ability to buy goods from them. 
And because you pay a membership to them, people will continue to buy direct from them. And we all know, because I've been guilty of it, you caught me before, um, of doing, you click on page one, you pay for something that's more expensive than something that was on page five. But we've paid in the past a membership fee mm. to be a member of something. And because you're a member of something, you feel a bit like Jim, obliged to use it. And so you buy the money there. Oh, such a clever concept, that was it. So, some things like that. Amazon, Netflix, Sky, um, Sky Disney Protect, Plus. Disney. You need to review all of them. And if you can't... And use some of the savings you make on them to make sure you're adequately insured or you're saving for the future, not the other way around. It's like businesses do. So when the, when this recession, which will come about, and I'm not being negative because that is what we're going to head into. Let's not make any bones about it. Um, companies will stop their marketing budgets They'll stop promoting themselves. But actually, you need to go, well, actually, where can I cut money in the business to go, well, actually, if we're going to, I need to actually be promoting my services more to make better revenue and be more profitable. So you need to review your business and go, well, actually, I need to be going after the activities that make me money, not pulling back on the activities that make me money. But we do anything wrong. And, and I, I'm... I'm not convinced this, you know, this inflation of 10 odd percent, you know, net, net, Netflix never. is is 20. Um, our uh, British gas thing came in the last day, the annual thing, it's 11 point odd percent. Council tax will go up by 3 percent. You know, the water will go up by two and a half, whatever. It, 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 it'll work itself out. Plus, it's not been this high inflation yeah. for a long time. And people don't need to panic. You know, today, the, um, is it BP or Shell? I can't remember which one of them came out with Quarterly profit of eight billion pounds. Quarterly profit. That's thirty-two billion pounds profit in a year. Now, this whole issue of um, you know um, energy crisis and all that it affects every single person in this country. So it's that big of an issue that, in my eyes, it's not an issue because if you've got one organisation who are making thirty-two billion profit on average per year. And then people said, you're putting up prices, we can't afford it. Something will give. Don't worry about the energy crisis. Yeah, don't worry. They'll, 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 they'll get results. You know, it, it, let's go back to COVID. That was a crisis. It got resolved. The government will find a way to resolve it because otherwise it will have such a major impact on everyone's lives. It doesn't matter who you are, right? Whether you have got money or you have got money, the government have to sort it out. Someone is going to step in and sort this out. So, like she says, we're not worried about the fact that fuel is going up. Yes, it can be painful for a period, but it will have to be sorted. What I'm worried about is people thinking that sticking 82 quid a month into a pension pot for 20 years is going to give them a 40 grand a year income for life. Mm. The, the other massive thing that I think people um, don't look at is state pension. I think years ago, I'm going to say it was a John Reynolds that worked a calculation that the pen, per, the state pension that a person would get and the increase was the equivalent of having about 340 grand of a personal pension. Mm. And if you've got a Mr. and a Mrs. or Mr. Mr. or whoever it may be, and you've got you've got a starting point of about 18 grand a year coming in to the house. Guaranteed. Going up every year. It's a great starting point mm. to base your um, financial freedom of stopping working on. People don't see it that way. They see, what am I paying? Over? Your national insurance contributions are not paying into a pension. They're paying people's pensions now. And this is the whole issue that they have. It's not a, I'm paying into a pot uh, for that. But you're getting 300 and odd grand back. You haven't paid that in per year. And this is why there's the whole issue. And you're getting free health care. It's hmm. another thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we won't get that. But, you know... Yes, our elective healthcare at the moment in the UK is struggling, yeah, you know, because there's just too many people on the waiting list. But for emergency medicine, if something happens to you need an emergency, I would say it's the best in the world. But yeah, we are to, that, that's a different ball game, and, and that's why I pay for private, uh, pay for private medical insurance because um, I pay extra so that I can actually go and get things sorted quicker when it's when it's not emergency, but. There is problems in the NHS, but that's something that's a much bigger issue um, at a higher level. But actually, from an emergency point of view, it's the, it's the great best healthcare you can have in the world. And you know what? It's getting worse because people 
are living longer, mm. but they're living in ill health. So a bit like an analogy of a car, the longer you have something, and the more you use it, as in your body, the more it's likely to break down and tinkered with. And if a car just lasted X amount of time, it's gone. <coughs> with the body, you are, you know, average age expectancy is increasing year on year on year. The NHS is oh, yeah. under pressure now because Hugely. people are um, having uh, more, more health issues because we're, we're like, if you look at statistics, we're all overweight in the UK. We don't have healthy diets. We don't exercise enough. Therefore, we're putting strain on the NHS. We can all talk about the fact the NHS isn't working properly, and but we're not helping that fact by not taking care of ourselves. But the the, the longevity of people goes back to our earlier chat of the pension of. Look at the numbers. People are living longer. Your pension got last longer. So you have the option. You can start a process now, which will be slightly painful at the outset if you haven't done it but it'll be a behavioral thing of starting a process and increasing it so that the future you which is living longer and longer and longer will be able to yeah, benefit. because you're going to be nearly i did this before if you retire 55 now and start with a certain age based on the ons statistics of the one in ten you're actually likely to be retired longer than you'd be working but if you haven't saved that amount of money, you're going to struggle. And save it into a bank account, and it'll start going that way. So you go into that. It's a 40-year 40 40 year savings pot or investment pot. Yeah, but it, it just comes back to saying that, like, this not don't park your future retirement. You've, you've got to actually look at it now, and you've got to start making provisions for you. And if you've got some old pensions, you need to tidy them up. Don't just ignore them. That's your money. If that if that eighteen grand came through the door in an envelope full of cash, you do something about it. Just because it's a one page or two page piece of paper from Aegon saying it's worth X amount. Isn't it amazing that because people travel all over and jobs now, <clears throat> a nine grand pension there, an eighteen grand pension there, another nine there, and another nine there, and all of a sudden you have forty five thousand pounds in pension pots. If you were to start saving two hundred pounds a month, it would take quite a while to to build that up. But people just go, oh, it's just a pension pot. Well, if if two or three of them are charging you an astronomical fee for that, yeah. they're just basically whipping off some of your profit. Sometimes you are actually better to amalgamate all into one, C forty five grand rather than nine. Well, you know where they all are. Then. And you know where they all are. It's in one place. It's easy to look at, or in a couple of places. And it's, a, it's a starting point we from a big pot. with 10 or 12 different pots. And then we put them all together and they're like, actually, I know where it is now. I know what I've got. And they know it's been... And from a behavioural point of view, having 45, 50, 60, 80,000 pounds as a figure <clears throat> seems to be more of an incentive yeah. to, to start building yeah. rather than all these ones dotted around yeah. and not knowing about them. There we go. So, you know, recession will kick in. Don't worry about it. Review what you're spending at the moment. Um, drop us an email on the, the link that we've attached if you want one of our spreadsheets. You can tinker with it as you want, but it gives you an idea of what you're spending now and what the future you mm. will spend. Increase your direct debits for any pension contributions that you are making. Uh, look at amalgamating them all together only to save cost. And if you haven't set up a pension yet, shame on you, get the bloody thing done. Exactly. And if it's coming from an employer and you haven't done it, it's free money. They give you free money. So the go. government give you free money as well. They do. That's another it's about all they give you. I'm Charles. <laughs>